Hey guys, Jason here, Samco Workshop. Today we're talking Go Fast trucks. Okay, mid size 2024. These are the Go Fast versions, the desert racers, uh, the ones that everybody dreams about, the suspension mecha trucks, the ones that are ready to just fly over anything and they can handle washed out and, uh, roads and they can handle whoop de doos and they can just, you know, soothe, smooth butter ride, go fast kind of trucks. And they're out there and they're amazing. And so we have basically one, two, three, four, four of these, five if you count the uh, Canyon as well too, the AT4X. But so we have these in here and uh, what are they going to be? How they compare? So let's look at them, break them down simple for you because a lot of it's going to come down to preference. But simple versions, what's it take to make a truck go fast and do this stuff? The uh, off-road desert racer truck. Suspension, horsepower, those are the things that are going to matter and a little bit of ride quality and capability. So when we look at that, what do we got? Well, we got the Colorado ZR2. Coming in at 310 horsepower, 430 foot-pounds of torque. It's got Multimatic DSSV shocks on it, which are fantastic. It's going to be 33s on it stock. You can fit 34s on it all day and 35s pretty easy. You're going to have front and rear lockers for those times you do get into some of the mud holes or the issues or obstacles along that trail that are going to need a little more finesse to get through. And it is $50,000, okay? Sub $50,000 in reality, okay? Under 50 grand. That is a beautiful thing. That alone for a go fast truck, in my opinion, makes this one the number one to beat, period, uh, because of the combination. The amazing Multimatic DSSVs. The fact that you can put 35s on it, the fact you got a front and a rear locker, the fact that you got tremendous horsepower and torque, the fact that you are under 50 grand, and the fact that this horsepower and torque is not made with a hybrid battery. Okay, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So that one is phenomenal for it, whether it's a ZR2. Now, when you get into the Canyon AT4X, you're going to jump that price up a little bit more. But And you're going to get, we, I don't know why they put white leather seats in a in an off-road truck, but apparently they do in the Canyon. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm seeing a lot of those, though. Um, but so that ZR2 would be my number one. Uh, second place for me would actually be this Raptor, the Ranger Raptor. Again, we are looking at 405 and 430. Okay, that is top dog king of the world right here. This is the one if you are looking for raw power in their sport and the modes they have in it, and it's just it's an amazing truck. You're getting Fox 2.5 live action or live valve shocks on there, which are incredible. You're coming in at fifty-seven thousand dollars, which is not that bad of a price for what it is. You're on 33s, putting 34s on it is probably pretty easy. 35s, I'm not sure. Haven't seen anybody do it yet, but it may need a little work to get a 35 on there. But you don't need 35s on a go fast truck, but it's nice to have. But you have the power, you have everything you want, you have the amazing suspension, you also have front and rear lockers, again, for when that trail gets a little tougher on you. Just a beautiful, beautiful setup, and it's a pretty decent price. It's not real ridiculous, as long as people, these dealers, don't start doing stupid markups on them. Um, like they have in the past if we can get by that which it seems like we're able to when this truck starts showing up and it becomes available Hopefully if you remember in my other mid my mid uh, size Ultimate comparison videos. I was doing uh, Last year end of last year. I was saying that this Raptor will be unobtainable. Nobody will get one Well Ford has kind of changed that a little bit and they're starting to make a lot more of these hopefully Getting them out there because traditionally it was expected that you'd be waiting two years to get your hands on one And uh, it looks like that might be loosening up now and they're making some more so that's a very good possibility on there uh, The TRD Pro from Toyota there. This is their go fast version. You're uh, 326 horsepower 465 foot-pounds of torque, but you need a 500 pound battery and system attached to that in order to get that. You cannot achieve it without the battery. These ones are achieving it through just uh, uh, the, the actual horsepower of the motors and the turbos. This one's turbo too, but you got to have a battery system to get that. It does have Fox 2.5 shocks, similar to what that does. Little differences, but similar. 63,000 with an asterisk, might be 65, plus Toyota markups on the very rare to be out, you know, for by the time it even gets out. Won't even, I shouldn't even be called it 2020 because it's not coming until closer to 2025 but you're probably going to be much closer to 65 68 i'm guessing on this so the price is stupid on this one and you're you get 33s on it you're probably going to have to fight hard to get a 35 i bet it's doable but you're probably going to have to do some work to do it 
you get a rear locker only on a Toyota, and the only one out of all these that kind of bites you in the butt when it comes to that is you cannot use your locker or any of your fancy off-road stuff in Toyota unless you are in four low. You cannot use it in four high. So that means that if you're wah, wah, whipping down through there and you're zipping and popping and bouncing through and all of a sudden you get there and there's a creek that's washed out right there, means you can't just roll up to that, put her in four high, engage your rear locker, drop in, pop out, come up, go through, put it back, and then hit wah and be gone again. You have to pull up to it and you got to stop, put it in neutral, go into four low, put it back into drive, pull forward a little bit, hit your locker button, rock back and forth and engage it, get it to go, drop through your hole in four low, come back out, hit the locker button, rock back and forth to get it to disengage, put it in neutral, put it back into four high, put it into drive, then continue on. Okay? May not seem like a problem for some, but for many of us, it's an absolute annoyance that their four-wheel drive system in Toyota is so archaic um, compared to everybody else. But you got to remember that you do get a rear locker. You do not get to use that locker unless you are in four low, which is a headache. Um, the Mojave, okay, the Mojave, you know, this one here is the one that kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit. And I see why Jeep did it because it is an open air experience. It has doors off, the roof off. It's got a lot of great things to it. And I love the go fast attitude. It comes with, it's only got 285 horsepower. It's this net, the only one of these that's a naturally aspirated V6, 3.6 Pentastar. You got 285 horsepower, 260 foot pounds of torque. Okay, that's literally, you know, that's half the torque of what most of these are, which is tremendous. And you know, it's it's only, a, it's it's down a third minimum of the horsepower. This thing is, is a dog compared to everything else on here. Um, you do get Fox 2.5 shocks on here, which is really nice. The price is up there at 60K, being higher than all of them except for the Tacoma. 33s come on it, 35s are easy to do. Rear locker on it only, which is nice, but you can use that rear locker in four high. But with the solid front axle and that kind of stuff, that Mojave is a very, it's going to ride a lot different and it's not going to ride as good as these other ones are on that off-road, that fast, go fast kind of stuff. Now, some people love it. I own a Gladiator. I love my Gladiator. I just don't really understand the Mojave, that, that model too much. But again, I'm not into that kind of thing. Uh, it's a dang sexy truck. I love the looks of it. I do love the suspension. I love a lot of things about it, but I'm more of a Rubicon guy. So this one, in my opinion, doesn't make sense. If I'm looking for a go fast, running over the bumps, getting through things, my opinion, for me personally, hands down, this one wins all day long with this one coming into second place. And if depending on how close you could get this price, if I could, you know, this one, like I said, I, I, I was able to get it 2023 for 47 k I, I turned it down when I bought my, I canceled the order, but I was at 47 grand for this exact truck. Okay, and if we could get this one here, if we could get that down close to that too. These two are very close together. I would pick this one all day, personally, um, because of the price factor. But these two are your best bets. This one is so far out of element for me by the because of the price and because of all the missing stuff and i'm not interested in that truck at all even as a go faster um in, in the hybrid i don't want to have to rely on the hybrid to make my power these ones blow it out of the water on everything but just 30 pounds of torque but i mean that raptor kills it and it doesn't need a battery um to do it and the mojave like i said the design of this vehicle is designed to drive slow and controlled and do things um, they made the Mojave version to kind of match that Desert Racer, and it does it well. This will be the most re robust of all of these. This vehicle will handle the bumps and the abuse and the constant use and everything like that. This will handle it better than any one of these other ones will. Okay, it's just designed much stronger. So you got to take the considerations here for all of them. They, and, the, and the price of this is not crazy but it's higher. Now, if you get a deal at the end of 2024, like we did at the end of 2023, where you can walk away with this for like, say, 40, 47 grand, now this one has tremendous power, okay? This one now is gonna jump right up here with these, th with these two and because of that. So each one of them offered a lot to, to work with if that is your attitude is get in there and slide around the corners and go down the dirt roads and the fire tracks and fly through it and then hit the washboards and then go through there and then up and down this hill and up and down this hill around that corner and like if you're if go fast mode is what you're after 
these are your best option trucks and they all still offer enough capability so that when you have to slow down and get through an obstacle or you want to just slow down drop the windows enjoy it hang your head out the door and take your time cruising through some stuff these will all do that as well too there's a lot of fantastic features in every one of these okay they are fantastic you know options you cannot go wrong so but here's a little quick look at the go fast versions of these mid-sized trucks why they make them and uh, who they're for and how they're going to benefit you every one of them suspension wise is very comparable but notice raptor the uh, toyota or i mean the tacoma and the mojave Fox 2.5s pretty much across the board. Chevy uses those Multimatic DSSVs, which are fantastic as well too. Um, but it's you know these shocks is pretty interesting that all three that make the same kind of a truck are all using the same kind of a system. Now each one of these are tuned by Fox specifically for each of these vehicles. So don't think you're going to take one off of this and put it on there. It's going to be the same thing. They are tuned for the use of these vehicles according to what. Ford says here, what Toyota says here, and what Jeep says here. But it's interesting that the same type of a shock setup with a few corrections in there uh, along the board. So there you go. A little quick video for you on the Go Fast Trucks. Thanks for watching.